swear I checked that microphone like three times. I swear I did. I won't bother you anymore with my stupidity though, if your editor Matt hates me. Any case, Wild Punch Man, Chapter 97, Backpack, was a chapter when I first read it. Initially, I didn't like it that much, but then, reading it back, I realised, and I'm sure you've noticed by now, I'm not that smart, so I actually realised I do quite like it. I think it's mostly because of how the pacing of the chapter goes, and how we've ended the last chapter to how we went from this chapter. Also, just quickly, um, as I'm sure most of you know, Murata went back and fixed the issues with chapter 96, so any issues I had uh, are fixed with the last chapter, especially kind of because he actually made it a little sadder, with literally as the ninjas die, like, you, the last thing you see is them, like, collapsed and, like, in tears, so, okay. Fine. In any case, like I was saying, the last chapter, of, as you know, was super fast. It was like, you know, all about speed. Everyone was like blitzing, you know, the whole fight lasted seconds. But at the same time, what I liked was um, about this chapter, which I suppose, the reason I didn't like this chapter that much, I suppose, because I felt like it felt quite slow, but that's just how it was going to feel, because it's like, if you drive on a motorway or a highway at like 70, 80 miles an hour, and then you go onto like the standard roads, and they're like 30, 40 miles an hour, you're going to notice that speed difference, and it's going to feel slow in comparison. It's not bad, it's just slower, and this is just how, uh, it represents how Child Emperor fights to me as well, because as we saw, Child Emperor, he was going through the maze, and he was like trying to figure out where everyone was going, like he was keeping design and everything else, and then when that monster went to surprise attack him, uh, obviously, you know, he had, his, he had his tank behind him, and that's how Child Emperor fights, it's slower, and this is what I'm quite excited to see how Child Emperor fights more in the future, because everyone in the series so far has been like, I'm a martial artist, I'm a swordsman, ninja, robot, you know, uh, just, just a hand-to-hand -hand fighter, psychic, and that's not bad at all, but, like, you know, They've been obviously very entertaining fights, but at the same time, Child Emperor is pro looks from the looks of it seems to be a bit more strategic. And you know, like, like he, from what we've seen in this chapter, he thinks a few steps ahead. He's like he's constantly like, okay, this doesn't work. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Like he's ahead of his opponents and he outsmarts them, uh, which I quite like. And I'm interested to see how he fights. Like I've just said in the future. Why wow, you're repeating yourself, you fool. As it carries on, he manages to go through to where Metal Knight's body is, and. I suppose more than anything, this adds, adds some questions about Metal Knight, because, right, so, there's obviously, with the organisation, there's obviously links to the Hero Association, we know this because of the battle suits that Narinki gave to those mercenaries. Uh, from there, we also see, from what, um, Metal Knight, from when Child Emperor got there, we can first of all see that, um, Metal Knight has... Like, Metal Knight has not only been damaged by Mozart's King of Roach, and that's made Child Emperor go, Oh, okay, I don't care, like, I, I've got to avoid that monster. But he's like, I don't care about, um, monster, like, he says as well, I don't care about the monster association conversations or anything like that, as long as, um, there's information about the hostage. Which isn't the best idea, I mean, sure, he's focused on his priority mission, which is to rescue the kids, well, the kid, in this case, but at the same time, I just don't think it's the best idea to ignore possible information that could help to take down the Monster Association. Like, if that could help in the future, that could be really good. Um, in any case, as he also notices, though, very quickly, is the monster's been taken apart expertly. Like, it's all been very neatly laid out, so then he starts panicking as a robotics expert and the technology they've used to take down, um, the technology they've used to defeat... The technology they developed to defeat the monsters are going to be used against them, that's got him panicking as well. And the thing is, the last thing that's made me, like, really concerned about Metal Knight more than anything, is kind of where his loyalties lie, is... The fact that he had the information, like, despite the fact he says, I'm not helping, you know, Dis despite that information, he said, like, he has, no, what am I saying, he had information to where Wagamma was, he knew exactly where, he didn't even give that to them, and Child Emperor got mad at that, and it's like, well, because obviously, like, there's ideas, like, I've, I, I think, obviously, and I think a lot of people do that, Metal Knight, Beaufoy, it's part of the organisation, because obviously we're there links to the Hero Association, but it's like, where do his loyalties lie? Because I like to think with Metal Knight, like, he might be part of the organisation, but at the same time, he's, you know, he's, he's out there for humanity. Overall, his side is with humanity, but the fact that he's hiding this kind of information from the Hero Association, like, very extremely useful information that could give him the advantage and help him out, and obviously Child Emperor was right to be angry, but, like, that's, it's like, why is the main question. A lot of questions from just this part alone. And of course, I won't be surprised with how the story goes if, like, um, well, I won't be surprised if Metal Knight isn't part of the organisation, but I won't be surprised if uh, Murat and Wan do a twist like, no, he wasn't part of the organisation at all, because that's the kind of twist that they like to do in these stories. Um, 
I don't know, there's just a lot of questions about the organisation. What do you think? Please, please let me know. Uh, I imagine we'll, I might I might do a discussion video on the organisation just because they're super interesting. Um, and I have to think about some stuff for it too. But yes, please let me know what you think of this whole thing because obviously, you know, it's... <laughs> After he gets the information of where Bogoma is, he gets out there and Phoenix Man is out there. And I think they did a great job of making you go, oh, okay. Because, like, literally the first thing you see is, like, he wasn't caught out by the Octo Tank. Like, the first thing you see Phoenix Man is done is the Octo Tank. That shows kind of, like, his smarts and he's better than the average monster. Which, obviously, he makes clear with the middle management. And this is where a lot of villains, I think, are going to downfall against Child Emperor. Because, as we see, so obviously he gets out his, his candy and he starts, like, eating his lollipop. And, um... And as uh, he goes on, like, as Phoenix Man starts talking to him, he's like, a mere child like you won't do this. And that's obviously a sensitive point for him. Like, he's had a sensitive point like this for a while. We've seen it since the first S-Class meeting where, um, I always forget his name. McCoy? No, not McCoy. And he was like, if, you're, if a child like you can't appreciate this, then maybe you should leave. And he's obviously been quite sensitive. We've seen this now. And it's kind of like a monster actually pushing it to that level. Because every time he goes on and mentions that he's a child, you know, he snaps off a bit of the lollipop. He snaps off a bit more. Like, he's like he's not licking it. He's crunching it. And he's like, he's you know, he's ticked off, you know. So, I think this is the thing where I'm trying to say... Her mo heroes and monsters to look too much at her... Like, if you look at hero names, they're quite representative. People focus too much on the child side of Child Emperor. When they should be focusing more on the Emperor side. An Emperor has an em If they have an Empire, they, they, if they're an Emperor, they have an Empire. To have an Empire, you need to be a great, successful strategist to take over that much, you know? You have to be good and smart to be an Emperor. And to people like, oh, he's just a child, what does he know? But then obviously, you know, as we see, he very clearly outsmarts Phoenix Man. Phoenix Man thinks he's obviously better because he's better than the average monster. And like, I've... And to be honest, it's partially my fault, because I should have been like, oh, you know, Phoenix Man, you know, like, he's Demon Class, and generally if an S-Class hero is coming up against a Demon Class, they're gonna wreck him. That's just how it works in most cases, especially where the S-Class heroes are now, I, I just, I, there aren't many uh, Demon Classes they can come up against that they're gonna struggle with. Um, in any case, as the fight carries on, um, I've always wanted to know more about Phoenix Man. I've been very curious about the name, and I've been very much like, oh, is it regenerating power? Is it regeneration powers? Is it fire powers? Is it something to do with Phoenixes? <sighs> so the idea that his name is just like, oh, I was wearing a bird costume one day, and I couldn't get it off, so I became a monster. <sighs> I love it so much. It's so stupid. This is one of my favorite things about One Punch Man is it'll either be silly or serious and I can't predict it and that's the best thing about it. I can't predict if a hero or a monster is going to be stupid or serious or both and it's oh, it's so good. I, I loved I loved that that was just his backstory. I, I was ready for some like oh like like here's some cool monster powers. No he's just a giant bird. That's all he is, that's why he's Phoenix, man. Okay. So when he goes for the attack, and obviously Child Emperor is a few steps ahead, and he's like, oh, well, you know, I've already been the time you're monologuing, and this is kind of like, I suppose challenging, like, the monologue tropes and stuff like that, where he's like, oh, well, were you monologuing? I actually set up all this stuff, so I'm fully ready to take you on. So, obviously, like, he, he set up his barrier. He's like, it's really useful, I just wanted to test it out here. And he puts it away, and obviously Child Emperor's like, but I don't really have time to mess with you. And oh boy, and I think what I like about Child Emperor's weapons a lot is they aren't just like, here's like, here's a taser and a drill, no, like, it's like, here's a, here's a recorder that turns into a lightsaber, you know? Here, here's a little octopus toy that turns into a tank. It's all got the theme of children stuff, but in reality, it's all very deadly, which I think is kind of, which also reflects on Child Emperor, you know? You, you know, like, you look at him as a kid, but you miss the deadly force and mind that is behind that. And it's just so good, it's like, that, he really destroyed Phoenix Man. I did not think Phoenix Man would go down like that. I don't have any complaints though. Um, in any case, he also says something, he's like, what was it he said? He said something about Phoenix Man, he talked about himself at the same time. One moment. So Child Emperor says, you know, um, it's good to have ambitions. Oh, because, um, I forgot to mention, because part of his monologue was like, he's like, I'm going to become the next Orochi, I'm going to become better than Orochi. And also, I don't think there's actually a bad panel now of Orochi, now that I think about it. Like, that isn't like, he's had better panels, but still Orochi in that panel was so good. He's just, he's generally just like one of the best panels of each chapter. He generally is, whenever he shows up, he's always involved in that. And I think that really, you know, good way it's showing that he's a threat as well, by always drawing him the best he can be too. Um, in any case, he goes like, it's good to have ambitions, but a true, what, what was it? 
good to have ambitions, but someone who was truly remarkable wouldn't have joined the Monster Association in the first place. And then he laughs and he goes, the same could be said about me. So maybe he has regrets from joining the Hero Association too? I imagine it's something like that. Either he thinks he's better than the Hero Association, which wouldn't surprise me because of how the S-Classes are, but also Child Emperor has seemed to be, in a way, the most mature member at times, and also... But at the same time, I suppose, because the Hero Association, especially if you read some of those side chapters, isn't the most, like, you know, ethical association. It can be quite corrupt at times, and we've seen this. So maybe he knows about the inner working, seeing as he is a higher-ranking member, and, you know, obviously people underestimate that he's a child, so maybe he knows more than he's letting on with that kind of stuff. Maybe, I think that's I, that wouldn't surprise me, of course, because they're not the best. Uh, in any case, as the story goes on, um, he goes through and he rescues Wagamma. Uh, oh, by the way, GO MONSTER, OH MY GOD! There we go, just to get that out of the way. And I do, once again, like, so he says Wagama using poison gas, and then Sludge Jellyfish shows up. He's Tiger level, which I was surprised at, considering, but, like, well, I wasn't surprised at, I think it's just the, you, I think it's just how his quirk works, and matchup, not his quirk, that's a different series, how, like, the matchups work between these two characters. So, obviously, what I like about Child Emperor is straight away, he's like, okay, try everything, boom, 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 he tries his sword, like, you know, he tries his weapons, and then eventually, it doesn't work, so he literally just pumps him full of fuel, and then just sets him on fire, and that's the end of Slime Jellyfish. Okay, I'm fine with this, because once again, it's like the unpredictability, don't know where it's going. However, I feel like the story... Oh, yes, the mics. Um, I feel like the story was really setting up, hopefully, for Garo to come and be in, because that's how it's gone. Like, someone beats Garo, he comes back and beats them instead. In most situations, that's how, except for Slime Tower, of course. Um, in most situations, that's how it's always gone down. Um, but... I don't know why. Well, I suppose it just throws, like I said, unpredictability. Unpredictability? Unpredictability! It's all about that more than anything. Um, but I did like that. So I was like, okay, that's that's just the end of Slime Jellyfish. And then obviously he saves Wagamma, and then. <sighs> I, I remembered, I do not miss this kid. I do not miss this little. <laughs> Let's not say the naughty words. In any case, like, the first thing he does is, like, I'm hungry. So, obviously, Child Emperor gives him some food, and then straight away, he's like, What took you so long? Oh, my God! Not even a thank you, not even a, a please, or, like, you know, oh, I, I owe you so much. No kind of respect to Child Emperor at all. He's like, I'm hungry. The moment he's fed, he's like, What are you doing? I, I couldn't believe him. And I'm so happy Child Emperor shot him that look. He just shot him a look of just, like, are you serious? And he's like, oh, okay, okay, I won't, I, I, I won't say anything, but you better not. Child Emperor, look, they're all risking your lives for you, and this is how you repay them. <sighs> like, and I'll be interested to see how, if this is a thing in the future, like, whether the upper, like, the upper members of the Hero Association, like, the main benefactors are all like this, or maybe there's some more reasonable ones. I don't know, it just couldn't be like One Piece, where, like, you know, top dogs, all just not very nice people. Well, 99% of them, at least. Um, as the story continues, we then get to see uh, a very, very big surprise. I was not expecting this guy to show up. Because as they, uh, like, they can sense a monster, uh, he sends a tank, uh, a, tiny, a tiny little toy tank, and it sends a massive blast for what it is, but then it gets destroyed because G5 is there. And I think everyone was predicting a Genos G5 fight. I was, I would have loved that, because obviously I think it's just the way the story is, everyone's predicting like these kind of like, in particular matchups, or like for example, Puri Puri Prisoner versus Nian and the Prisoners. Uh, obviously, whereas a lot of people wanted Flashy Flash versus the two ninjas. A lot of people are saying Tatsumaki versus Guro Guro. A lot of people are saying that and this and this. So I think a lot of people were expecting Genos, obviously the, the main cyborg, to fight against the main robot of the Monster Association. Like who's with, like who's with the Monster Association, I should say. So the idea that he showed up to fight Child Emperor is interesting, especially if Metal Knight's involved, maybe this can be some kind of test for Child Emperor, especially because Child Emperor, he fought quickly, right, he was thinking quickly, uh, and he was like, okay, go, and he, like, played his, like, little recorder, and, like, he sent, like, a massive, like, he sent stuff, he's like, okay, this is good at taking down robots, and he took him down, he took them down straight away, and I think, like I've said, a lot of people see the, em like, should see the Emperor side more of him, but, like, at the same time, the child side of him, because, like, he's got a plan, but when that plan goes immediately wrong, just like a child, like, what do I do? Uh oh. Like, and, he, and he's like in trouble because of the kind of opponent he's up against. Because obviously, Met, uh, G5, we haven't seen a lot of because he's literally just, he's just swung his sword. And that's all he's done to take down his things. So I'll be interested to see how uh, Child Emperor fights back, especially. Because he's also got to protect Wagamma at the same time. Who knows what Wagamma's going to do in this fight? I imagine Wagamma's probably just going to run off and get lost, and that's going to cause a lot of problems now. But of course, Child Emperor, from what we know, I imagine hasn't gone all out either, because if you've ever read some of those um, side chapters, especially like the power level kind of chapter, where he made a device that ranks, um, ranks 
that ranks her fighting power. Like, he had, like, these giant spider legs or something. I think he had those before uh, in the Alien Invasion, too, um, come out of his backpack. So I imagine he's got a lot more to show, but he's obviously very precise at this point to maybe try not to waste too much power. <sighs> in any case, uh, yes, I like this chapter, but what did you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Got any ideas about the organization, Child Emperor, Metal Knight, anything like that? I'd love to know. Please let me know. Uh, I, need, I need to know. <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching though, and subscribe if you want to see more One Punch Man, because I'm actually getting these out kind of on time. I'm nearly caught up with everything, so maybe I'll be regular. Probably not though! Goodbye! Wobbers with the shouting. <laughs> Bye guys.